Hello folks, it is now the night before the um, Vanguard Zero Championship, it's now 10.30, I have to wake up at 3, so I have 4 hours and a half to sleep. I think what I might do is, what I did right now is on my phone, I have loaded up the site, probably can't really see, but it shows the check-in button, I'm gonna just check in once I wait, I'm gonna wake up just before the check-in, check in, and probably sleep another hour because you essentially check in at 11 a.m. GST and the tournament starts at 12 so you basically just need to check in and then if I fail to check in because there's too many people then I'm gonna go back to sleep and we're gonna do this again the next time the Vanguard Zero Championship rolls around because I'm definitely not gonna you know wake up just for that and then not continue sleeping so yeah I'm gonna go get some shy. Good morning it is now 3, 3.56, you can see here maybe 3.56 of the next morning. I woke up at 3, a little bit before 3 to check in. I checked in successfully. I can show you. Here, you can see. Checked in successfully, so we have another 3 minutes until it starts and then the bracket will be posted. It's 4 a.m. Uh, the English version of Zero has been announced at the release date. I'll make a video about that later, but it's still very cool that they finally did it. And yeah, let me log into my computer because I'll have to be communicating with my opponents, hopefully several, and I don't lose round one, <laughs> but let's see how it goes. Okay, round one. Let's go. So it looks like we're playing a mirror in round one. This is a player called Sugitsu, or Sugitsu. And so we're going to be facing the mirror, and let's hope for the best. Round one. I lost to a crit. F. Alright, so, as you guys may have noticed, uh, things didn't go so well. We lost our first round. This is already a couple days after the fact. And I wanted to rewatch this game um, simply to see some of the decisions I made and how they potentially led to my downfall. Now, one nice thing that came out of this is that the person that beat me in this first round actually went all the way to the finals and lost sadly, but still had a really good showing and actually lost simply because they overcommitted a bit. You can watch the finals on the Vanguard channel, um, but they essentially overcommitted a bit and then lost because of that. But I actually, like one of the commentators actually played against this player before and also lost the exact same way that I did. So I feel like it's partially the my opponent's deck build but also some of my decisions may have impacted things. So let's take a look at it together. I'm gonna to be playing this, uh, I recorded this, so we're gonna be going through it bit by bit and just see how things go. So uh, I'm gonna basically just pause and unpause and things like that, it's a nine minute game. So here we can see, you know, from the starting turns it goes into the bar and I will respond in kind as I also have a bar. Now for me, whenever it's an overlord mirror match, um, I'm always, not sure if I should be damage denying or giving them the first damage because the first Conroe, whoever searches Conroe, like it's uh, technically I think I should have attacked here. As you'll see, I'm debating on it, I'm thinking about it, I choose not to. Now, the reason why is because I don't want to give him the Conroe because I'm like normally in a dope mirror match, whoever finds Ermo first gets to start filtering first. And now that doesn't necessarily mean that they will win first, but it does kind of mean that, you know, they lose that search. And then here where he healed, I was like, oh, I made a good play because he would have healed that first damage. But then, you know, I think about, but then no, he would have drawn that first damage, actually. Uh, he would have drawn this heal and the first damage would have been whatever he drew earlier. So then um, this, you know, becomes a bit of a questionable thing. And then in hindsight, I really should have actually given him that first damage, I think, because I simply lost a bit of the damage race that I think does impact these later turns. So here I go for my uh, Conroe search for the airmo as usual. I have a PG in the hand, so there's no reason to, you know, think twice. Um, and also, at this moment, I didn't know that my opponent played crits. You know, normally, those players don't play crits. Like, we just don't, and it's, it's you know, draws are much more important to draw into your pieces and to draw into the ends and the PGs and filter and everything. So, here he whiffs another heal, and now the interesting thing is that I see he plays heal on two different cards, which means that one of those two is not a full playset, which, I mean, normally it wouldn't be. But then it's kind of interesting how he played, like, you know, chose to play those, so I'm like, maybe he doesn't have a full playset of dual axe, and therefore he has to make budget 
uh, investments in that sense. So here I get my first filter. So then in my brain, I'm like, well, I got to filter first and like he didn't crit me or anything or didn't rush me. So damage wise, I'm still okay. So then I should be fine. But then the thing is, is that I'm actually losing out. Um, I think I do choose to go for the cross ride because I'm like, okay, he's on 11k. I will be on 11k too. But then if I can, you know, snipe his back row, not let him hit me, I'll be like further up ahead in tempo. I mean, th that's how most of my mirror match games go. And then with that one PG in hand, I'm like, I won't need to use this for a while. You know, I'm still on one damage. He searches his PG, which I mean, I was like, okay, interesting. And then here I wasn't, I, I think I was like doing something or like looking at something else. So I was just like checking to make sure what he searched. And I was like, okay, it is a PG. And then he puts down the other air mode, the one that gains power. So I was like, that's interesting. Meaning that here he's going to swing three times. And then even if there's a defensive, that air mode will actually bring him over it. So here I don't get a defensive. He gets his counter charge. So I'm going to go to four damage this turn, basically. Um, or well, so I think. And so basically he's going to hit me again with a 20k. And here I'm going to just take it. And then I think the sound actually isn't playing or it didn't record with sound so that's whatever but so i'm gonna keep talking you through it so here you can see he sold us one to get over my 19k and there's the crit and then i'm i'm just like wait crits and i was just so shook and then he chucked a draw too but i mean that's fine i don't really mind that but i was like wait crit and then i was just like looking at all his other cards i was like wait like what else has he revealed what else has he shown i was also counting uh because they just did double trigger i was looking at all his previous drive checks to see what he's been putting on the bottom of his deck and so here i draw into another the end so i'm like nice now i just need to like filter into another pg basically because like I, the reason i didn't search it off the conroe was because i mean those players don't normally don't run crits and so here i'm like i'm on three damage and he only has three cards in hand so i'm in a pretty good spot to do overlord now this i'm not really sure if this overlord was the right call because <sighs> i mean my hand i have a berserk don't i so in hindsight, I could have just called the Berserk, had a second intercept that yes, could have been sniped, but I mean, the the Nahalem can get retired too. Could have had a second intercept and just retire like the Burning Horn, then attack with my Berserk into the Bellicosity, and then, you know, have the Nahalem essentially, like, the only problem is that then it's like, oh, my Nahalem is sitting there like a beat stick. But then what I could have also done is just like, not use Overlord and just call it down or like call down both of my grade twos not using the skill and just attack into them and then just give him one damage, that's fine. Deny his heals and things like that. The reason why I chose to do the Overlord here is because I was like, well, I can go bang, 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 you know, take out his front row. And I think I just jumped to a conclusion too quick. Um, whereas in hindsight, I really should have just thought about it a bit more carefully because now what you can see here is I don't have a booster behind the Nahalam, so it's not hitting anyway. So I still only have two attacks and then if I attack with the, the rear overlord first and he gets a defensive, my vanguard's not even hitting. So then I, if, it, if I don't check a trigger, I'm only hitting once. So it's, it's yeah, this was a really bad situation. Whereas like, if he checks the defensive, I'm only getting one attack in anyway on his vanguard, you know, and still taking out rears. Whereas if I didn't use skills and I just called my great twos without any skills, I would have gotten the two rears out and I still would have gotten my vanguard attack out, but I would have kept my three counter blast. And I mean, you'll see that it does come in a bit clutch. So here is his defensive, and I check nothing, so I just get to filter once. Dropping the Berserk Dragon that, again, I could have used. Drawing into Burning Horn, which is like, it's fine. Here I was assuming that he's going to go for a um, cross ride next turn, so I was like, well, Burning Horn is good, but I don't have a booster, so it's not that good. But anyway, here, you know, I'm checking my deck, checking everything that I have. I'm like, okay, three PGs left. I should be drawing into them soon, you know. I was hoping to draw into it there from the Ermo. And things like that but then clearly you can see that i am just right now like that decision to use overlord there actually screwed me over and i think that actually lost me the game there because if i hadn't and i just set up another intercept because here you'll see he can swing with his rear or his van at this point um depending on if he wants to preserve uh soul blast so he's not gonna he's gonna swing with this check a second time nothing and then essentially like he gets to swing twice at my face and like sure this gives me enough counter blast now if he, yeah, so he still swings at face, so this does give me enough counter blast to use the end. But then, you know, um, in the end, I don't know if I needed it that much. And like, I get the third, the end here, which really now makes me think, I wish I didn't use that overlord, because in the end, not using it would have let me use the end twice for four extra cards in the hand, which is insane. And so here I was really regretting it, 
and then obviously I should have moved quick otherwise. And so here now I'm thinking as always, you know, it's the situation of how should I attack? Because part of me is like, I should swing with my 11k at the 9k and then swing unboosted overlord at face and, you know, then see where my triggers go, you know. And then it's a question of like, do I put it on the other rear? And, and then just risk that they don't get a defensive and I can go for both or if he gets a defensive then nothing hits or do I go for Vanguard and then the second attack will actually hit so let's see what I actually do because I don't remember anymore um, but normally okay so I choose to go for the rear attack in the end so yeah I'm gonna attack rear I get a heal so things are looking pretty good for me I'm like huh he only has one card in hand so also in my head I'm like I will give the power to Vanguard because I will commit my other rear to swing at rear also I put in one Tejas I, ch I changed that up to for the mirror match and also for um, MLB matchups. But so here I'm like, okay, I'm in a good spot. I can take out his rear, I can give him another damage to face, and then I can swing with my Overlord here. I draw into heal draw. Obviously, I would have loved to check that heal there, but I mean, it's completely fine. So here I'm gonna just swing here, uh, and basically then I can swing with the Vanguard. I mean, if I get double trigger here, I can still hit Van, so it's, you know, still an option. But I can get a draw, so I'm gonna get a little bit of power and gonna take give him a second damage, so that's all obviously good. So then, uh, he's gonna basically take that one. It's a PG, so I'm looking, I'm like, oh, this is good, this is good. And so I'm gonna drop this, because I don't wanna re reveal to him that I've drawn too many heals, and I'm gonna just swing at the rear, and I'm like, I'm in a pretty good position, because I'm thinking, I now have a... 13k base vanguard, he has one card in hand, he'll have two, but he needs to basically commit whatever he has to hand just to get two attacks in. And if I get one defensive, he's not hitting anymore. So he calls down his normal airmo and promotes, keeps one hand, so it's a PG. Um, that's what that tells me. And so here he's swinging and I'm like, ooh, he, like this is where I thought I'm gonna win. Because I thought to myself, he has one card in hand, he couldn't make columns, he's banking on a trigger for his bar in order to actually hit if I, like, you know, like basically he's banking on two triggers for the bar to hit my Vanguard or banking on one for the bar to hit my uh, rear to you know, do that kind of play. And I was like, that's completely fine. But then what happens next is what I did not expect because he swings with Fan and first he checks the draw. That's fine. That again, all is expected. So I'm like, here, like I'm going to take one damage. Even here I'm thinking <laughs> before this, I'm thinking I'm going to take one damage if I don't get a defensive. Um, I was like, if I don't get a defensive and he gets two triggers on his bar, he hits, I lose. But if I get one defensive, I'm fine. But then he checks this. He checks this crit, and I was like, shit, really? And I've only seen the crits on the end, and he only runs them on the ends, but he's already checked them twice at very crucial moments, and he has one in the damage there. So I was just like, are you for real? So, crit goes on Van, power goes on rear, and here I am, praying for a heal. And as you'll see, there's a draw. I think I actually draw into a heal, don't I? No, 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 I actually draw into a draw. And nothing. And this sucked, obviously. So, yeah, just like that, uh, I lost round one. So it was pretty sad. Um, you know, I, I was kind of feeling frustrated because I was like, damn, really? That's how it ends. But then in hindsight, it's not so much that I lost because of the crit. I really did lose, I think, because of the first Overlord timing, because I could have done the end twice, could have had more cards in hand, could have had more fighting options, and then, you know, not giving him that one um, extra, not giving him that second attack to Vanguard that put me to five, I would have been on four face up, and then I would have been able to survive there, and I would have still healed because of how things went down. So, yeah, a little bit of regrets because of how I played that out but I mean in the end it's okay um I am gonna participate in the next one it won't be as terrible because like this time I have to wake up at three to check in and then get up at four to actually play um but then because DST is happening this weekend um once the next one rolls around it'll be wake up at four to check in and then start playing at five so it's a bit better still not that great but I can see myself waking up at four more than waking up at three at least so that's that so yeah, interesting tournament. Uh, congratulations to the winners of each block. It was honestly really interesting to play through it and see what Tournament Zero is like. I still have to really play a lot to get better. I'm not sure if I'll... Like, I think, looking back at it, I didn't play that badly with the end. I think I can still keep playing with it. But I've been practicing with MLB lately, and I want to take up Tsukiyo maybe more seriously too, because I feel like in a tournament setting is where that deck really can shine. Um, simply because of the stack manipulation. 
And so I'm going to see what I choose to go with in April. They might be something new. I mean, if, if Vermilion is out and it's as strong as these decks, then obviously I would like to play that too. But we'll see what actually does come out. But yeah, so right now, that was my first tournament run. But I'll be back in, what, three weeks or so? And it will hopefully perform better. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the channel members for your support and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.